today's video essay is about how I compose music for other artists. I started composing music effectively when I was 11, which means that I was able to compose uh, music before I could play any instrument. But unfortunately, when I formed my first band in 1988 and we went for auditions, I was told by producers that I was not a very good vocalist. So as a result, I did not do much on my own music. Of course, I've recorded a number of albums and I'm still going to release some albums, but I did not do it as effectively as I originally thought I would do because of that discouragement. But still, even up to now, I still write music for other artists. And mainly I write music for artists who come to my studio who say they cannot compose or maybe they've got a writer's block, they just want me to compose for them. So in this uh, video, I was commissioned by this company to create a reggae rhythm and then uh, work with two artists. One of them is Liaka Sinamunda. This video that I'm going to use for, 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 for the clips was not meant for public consumption originally. I was just recording the process so that I just, um, you know me, I just love to document, I love to archive stuff. So you see that uh, the video shooting was not very good. Sometimes my head was chopped off and so forth. I just wanted to document the writing process. Uh, it was not meant for public consumption, but we're still going to use it anyway because uh, the, the, the information there is uh, of some use. So the artist that I worked with is uh, Lia Kasanamunda. So what I did is I created the rhythm, I played everything, and then I called her for the session, and uh, the time Lia was pregnant, and uh, she said, you know what, I, I don't think I'm in the mood to write a song, so can you write the song for me? And I said, okay. But what I usually do is I love to co-compose with them, but I don't tell them that we are co-composing. Don't go foot us off. What I've written the chorus, can you contribute this word, can you contribute this line, can you com contribute this line, and unknowingly they end up composing. By doing that, um, we discovered that there are a lot of artists who can compose, but uh, at times they lack the confidence, maybe they were discouraged before, or they think it's something very difficult, but as long as you can create a melody, you are a composer. One. But I think all you need to do as a composer is to learn an instrument so that you can create your own instrument or background, which is a very useful tool for composition. Okay, let's get into the video. So the first thing that uh, we had to do was to agree on the topic. And uh, we agreed to write a song which we were dedicating to Elvis Nyati. Uh, our Zimbabwean brother who was murdered in South Africa by an Afrophobia mob. So Elvis was murdered on the 6th of April 2022. They beat him up and set him alight and uh, they killed him much too far. So. So I find it very easy when I'm writing a song for an artist to have him in the studio and then I give them a mic for guide vocals. We call it guide vocals because it's not the final vocals. We will just be composing and uh, the act of recording uh, the voice is just a way of documenting. It's just the same thing as writing down. Let me say mic. Palaba. Palaba. Let's 
And one thing that I have to mention again is I always hear artists say, I don't write songs, I just sing. In music, what we call writing is the creation part. So once you create something in your head, you are writing. In fact, the word writing and the word compose are the same in music. Those two words are synonymous. So on this clip, I gave it the mic so that we can write the song. We were writing phrase by phrase. Was on this verse, I wanted uh, four phrases. I also want you to notice uh, the difference between the way I sing it myself with my bad voice and uh, how it changed when she started singing with her own voice. <laughs> So this means that if you're a composer, don't worry about how bad your voice is. Because uh, once you give it to somebody who has got a good voice, you start seeing how good your composition is. So I first gave it the line and she interpreted it in her own way and it came out very nice. If you look around the world, uh, most composers like uh, Ben Bakarak who used to write for Dion Warwick, um, Ruth Timberton who used to write for Michael Jackson, those guys did not have very good voices but they still wrote anyway. Even people like Bob Dylan. One, I'm avoiding local names because I don't want to get in trouble. So don't think in Dugu and Suda Upawa and we do my money. But you never know how to do it. You never know how to do it. But it's like I avoid the video monum for that reason. There was a... Um, Tawanda Chishato who was present. He's a new artist. He, requested to be present during the songwriting process. I wanted Leah to, to, to paraphrase. And uh, the importance of that is uh, at times you need to repeat something, but if you repeat it with the same words, at times it sounds monotonous and boring. I wanted you to sing the same thing but using different words. It's called uh, paraphrasing. And it's a very effective literary device. Literary devices are tools that stimulate our audience attention. Like for example, repetition. I'm sure you know the, all songs have got a part or some parts that keeps coming back, especially on the chorus. That's why we say in Shona Tsokoro Rene Simba, you need to repeat some elements of the song. You need to use such things like alliteration, like rhyming. All those are known as uh, literary tools. So on this one, we're using repetition and paraphrasing. Yeah. Then next line, to do the same thing, but with different words. She emphasizes like, Nzara Irinani Uripamba. Nzara Uripamba Irinani Baba. Yeah. Now on the next clip I want you to notice something. Remember I said that uh, at times I trick the artist. I don't tell them that you are going to compose. I just ask them to do a task and they do it. By doing that, they will be composed unknowingly. So on this clip, what I did is I gave uh, some words 
and I asked her to to sing. But if you look closely, I never gave her the melody. But look how she she performed it. She created her own melody, and that's composing. Oh, no. So if such a person tells you that they can't compose, they will be lying to themselves. They can compose. Yeah. Kuno kwa tiri, wano tiri yenga baba. Mkoma waka pisu wa nakatarisa. Kuno kwa tiri, kakati wenga baba. Mkoma waka pisu wa nakatarisa. Sewa. Exactly. Ah, waka pinga. Ah. <laughs> on the next clip uh, we just created the fourth phrase of the first phase here we go the nikuno kwa ti wakati zunda baba shamane yango akatemane mabwe kusika a kuno kwa ti wakati zunda mama shamane yango akatemane matombo kusika afa exactly but I think Patashika was naturally about that chorus each and both each and both so the main thing is Now after writing the verses the meaning of the song is now very clear so right now we were now adding some ad libs to the chorus to really bring out the meaning of the song we just sing according to feel the song in azonzi ko tiri kuenda kupi so that's what we were doing on this clip and i also want you to notice that i did not give her the melody i just gave her the lyrics so i think manje ka chorus ta ta kuwa chiwa na manje zokuita se zokutaura like amai varuti dzoka kumwa nangu psychologist the modern generation has got a very short at attention span if a song takes too long to bring out its meaning or the, the interesting part they just press next because it's now very easy to do so because of technology as a result it's very recommended for the lyrics or the focus to come in very early number one number two it's also recommended that the chorus which is the main part of the song which everybody is waiting for should also come very early and it's recommended that it should come in before the first 50 seconds i think i'm going to two more pieces hey you may actually know that you really get it yeah well boys boys my songs are more than you just need to summarize a lot i think she's spanning one year very short yeah it's like you've got to get straight to the point chorus the happening the earliest time possible now for the second verse i gave leah the lyrics and she suggested that instead of just doing it as a as a normal verse she wanted us to do it sort of like a second chorus where she created the call and response style i also want you to notice once again that i gave her the lyrics but i did not give her the melody which means she composed the melody <laughs> Kusina maya kuyebe. Kusina maya kuyebe. Kusina maya kuyebe. Satoshi tadlibrejo. Wanwebi 
wasinga chike kuhure ya mulu nge uu mapirisa epi wanupeta mwoko muna si ure wa mwaka wa shumi ube kumwe kusinga maia kuya ure panu epi wasinga chike kuhura ya mulu se uku Makoshi wa yereche zure ni ya wapiru Kuti nguwa ya maiche mataka kunyara za yu Makoshi wa yereche zure ni ya wapiru Kuti kwa maiche mandesuta ka kunyara za yu Ya, lovely, so nga yapiru So, um, in short It means that we co-composed this song so when it comes to royalties, um, it means we have to draft a split sheet and uh, split the royalties. Because I'm sure you can see that she contributed a lot. So on the next clip, we started doing the proper focus. Now what we're doing all this time was just writing. So now she's getting into the booth to do the proper focus, the final focus. That she's in a proper focus as you tell you. After all is done, I want to play you the final version of the song. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go.
Quality and professionalism.